In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a radar plot in Tableau, and it's super simple, so let's get into it. Okay, here we are in Tableau, and this is actually what we're going to build, and I actually worked something out in Tableau that I don't think anyone else has ever worked out in Tableau when it comes to radar plots, but I don't know. I just haven't seen anyone else do it, so I'll get to that. Um, later on in the video. So this is actually made up of three parts. The first part, and I'll take it apart here. The first part is not the first part. The third part is really the labels. The other part is the actual polygon itself. And then this one, which I'm so proud of, is the grid, I guess, in the back, which is your axis, right? So we're going to build all three. But in order to do that, we're going to go back to Excel. And feel free to download this. You're most likely going to want to download this so you don't have to rewrite all the formulas. Uh, it's not super complex. The only thing is it's probably been a while since you've done it. So let me bring this over. Let's have a quick look. So I'm going to rename this uh, just because I did it when we started. So let's call this um, radius values. Okay, so we're going to build this from scratch. So the idea is we are looking at this as individual points coming out of the origin. So if you imagine, maybe I'll go to this one. So if you imagine this as the origin, so this is 0, 0. Okay, 0, comma, 0 in terms of x and y. So each of these nodes represents a distance from the center, right? The only thing is they're connected by where they end up. And that's just so we can get the polygon, and I'll show you that later on. So what the Excel spreadsheet does is it figures out the x and y coordinates are from a radius. And what I've also done is I've split it up into eight points going outwards. You can control how many it is. The only difference is you have to also consider how the angle splits up. So let's say you wanted to do five angles. All right, and I'll explain what this number nine is. Let's say you want to do five angles. Well, then you have to get 360 degrees and divide it by five slices. So the way you do that in in Microsoft Excel is you need to take 360 degrees, which is in degrees, you have to convert that to radians. So 360 degrees is equal to two pi. So you're going to get two pi and divide it by how many slices. So if you wanted to do it by five, you do it by five, for example, right? If you in this case, we have eight. So then you want to do this increment over and over. So this next one is really 0.78 times two, 0.78 times three, 0.78 times 4, and so on and so forth. And what happens is, as you go around, you'll eventually approach 2 pi, which is a full circle. So that's probably as much math as we're going to talk about um, in here, except for this one formula. So I don't want to overdo you with math, because probably a lot of you are just like, I'm doing visualization, so I don't have to do maps. Okay, And then this very last one, all it does is, so for a polygon, you need to tell it where to start and end. So what it's going to happen, what's going to do is it's going to start at position one, go all the way around and stop at position eight right here. But then you need something to connect eight and one again to complete the circle, right? To complete it. So this is actually just equal to the value one to bring it back to its starting position. That's all it does. Okay. <sighs> Next is the X and Y. So how do we convert that? Well, we're going to have to use good old trigonometry. And it is about midnight here in Melbourne, Australia. I've just worked like uh, 12 hours at my job, came home, and then did Tableau. So now this is like four hours into filming. And it's like midnight, and I have to learn trigonometry. And I'm like, ah, all right, we can do this. So let's get trigonometry. I know this isn't a math class, but just so you have an idea what it's doing in case you do want to kind of change it up yourself. So here we go. So you'll re probably remember this back in high school. So that's all I've done, right? So I filled in the angle that we've sliced, okay? The hypotenuse in our case is, you know, the radius. And then I use that to calculate the x and y, which our case is the adjacent is the x and the opposite is the y okay that's all i'm saying all right and just trust me so these are the formulas b2 cos 2 and the other thing is just be careful if you're going to rebuild this from scratch the the trigonometric functions in excel work in radians not degrees so be careful with that so that's the first part that gives you the how far the next one is the labels themselves right and let me show you what the labels are 
right? It's this one right here. What you'll notice is the radius is the same all the way around so that you can put your labels. And this could be, you know, let's say personality traits, you know, anger, love, compassion, blah, 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 blah. It goes all the way around. So if you go back to the Excel file, okay, you'll see the radius is the same for all of them. And actually what I'll do is I'll make this equal to the other one. Just so what happens is if you, let's say I go personality or, you know, like, yeah, personality, you start filling them in, it will also update this one just to make it a little bit easier. And the formulas here are the same. The last thing is the circles. Now this I am particularly proud of because when I looked online, let's say this one, okay, every, almost every single time, actually, I haven't seen one that doesn't do this, is they can build the polygon in Tableau. Cool. But then this grid thing in the back, they go to Excel or they go to some sort of graphic tool or whatever. And I was like, there's got to be a way to just build it in Tableau. So I don't have to worry about that crap, right? So here's what I figured out. If you take a scatter plot, okay, and you take the same X and Y coordinate and you have, let's say, how many is in here? Let's say... There are nine points, and you put them all on the same, same x, y coordinate, and then you introduce a size. You can make each one of those points different sizes, in you know, just like we have in this case. So I've done that, and then I've just introduced a size. Now they're all relative sizing. So so if I even if I made this one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, it's not going to matter in terms of how big it is because it's all relative. So let me show you how that works. So I'm going to save this, and we're going to build this from scratch. <sighs> Yeah, I'll, math at midnight. Like, I need a whiskey with this. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? Oh. <sighs> All right. Now, let's build this plot. Now I'm ready. So, let's bring in all three of these. So, I'm going to bring in radius values. Let's go sheet one. Uh, let's bring in the labels, okay, and then let's bring in the last one, which is circle. So let's build this one at a time. So I'm going to start with the actual radius value. So let me just fix this. It's so ugly. All right, there we go. So radius values, <clears throat> we're going to start with the X and Y coordinates. So think of this one, the columns, as X and the rows why? Now, I confused that when I was um, practicing this, and I couldn't figure out why, so um, that's why. So let's bring in X here, Y, and now we're going to add in the level of detail, so, you know, they split up. Let's grab item and drop it into detail. So think of this as your origin, and it's kind of going out like this. Okay. Like that, but we don't want the spider thing. I tried building it and it just looks ugly. So instead, we want the polygon, which is the outside. So we just go here, swap this to polygon. Okay, so don't panic. Basically, what happens when you see this, not just here, but in other places, is you haven't told it in which direction to go. It's basically just, I don't even know how it decides where to go, but unless you give it a path, okay, it's going to do this. So what we do is we bring uh, item into path. Okay, so then now it knows what to follow. So that is our plot. Now we can make this a little bit prettier um, by, for example, reducing the uh, opacity. The problem with this, and actually this is a good idea because once you put it on that kind of bullseye thing, you want to see the bullseye behind it. Um, the problem with it is you can't see the edges. So the trick to that is if you duplicate, let's say, the Y, so now you're going to have two of them. This second one, give it a border. Uh, switch this to line first. Switch this to 100%. Make it, look, let's say, that kind of black or a dark one. And then reduce the thickness. Okay, so basically you've got a really thin border on it. And then we go dual axis. There we go. We synchronize just so nothing falls out of alignment. And that's pretty much the first stage done. Later on, we'll clean it up with all the grids and everything like that. The next thing we're going to do is the labels. Same idea. So we're going to do X, Y, items into detail. And you can see they're all equal distance from the origin. And that's pretty much it for the labels. 
let's rename this actually. Let's call this polygon. Let's call this oop, labels. Okay, and then the last one is the circle. Okay, so we bring in X, bring in Y, and then we're going to use the circle sizes as the detail. Uh, hang on. So let me convert this first to a dimension. Yeah, okay. So we're going to drop that into detail, and that splits them up. Okay, so you can't see that yet, but they're stacked one on top of the other. And then we're also going to use size and drop it into that size. Now, right now, it doesn't really look like anything until you increase the size. And they'll start spreading out. Boom! Okay, I think I'm the first one ever that's ever done this. But uh, there you go. So that's your grid. Okay, so now you just got to bring them all together. The problem is you've still got all these lines and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to clear that out. So we go here. Show header, show header, show header, first one. Then we're going to right click on the white space, go format. We're going to get rid of a few things. So we're going to go into grid lines first, turn off the grid lines. We're going to turn off the zero line. So these are the zero lines here. All right. So we go here, none. Okay. And then we're going to get rid of these borders. Now, the way you do that is you go here into the borders and they are what's called row and column divider. So we simply turn that off. So none. Oh, what did I just do? Okay. None. And now you've got it completely free. So we go labels. We do the exact same thing. So get rid of that. Get rid of that. And actually what we're going to do is we're going to add item into label. Okay. That makes sense. And we'll reduce this size to be quite small because we're really interested in the label. Okay, format this, get rid of the grid line, get rid of, yeah, okay, get rid of the zero lines, and that's pretty much it. So there's still a border here. So let's come in here, at least it's a border I can see. What's that one? I think that's, I can't remember what this line is. It's a reference line? Nope. It is, uh, what is it called? It's not grand total. I can't find what it's called. There's a line here. So I'm going to ignore it. But there's a faint line. I can't remember what this one is. None. None. Is it grand total? No, hang on. We'll figure this out. Hang on. Uh, reference line. Let's just turn all these off. Ah, oh, there we go. It's access rulers. Oh my gosh. And access ticks are, pff, that's annoying. Okay, make sure this doesn't have it. That's weird. This one doesn't have it, but the labels one did. I don't know. See, don't know everything. We are always learning. Okay, let's go show header, show header. Let's go format to this. Get rid of the grid lines. Get rid of the zero lines. Get rid of the access rulers. Get rid of that, might as well. And I think that's it. So now we can go into dashboard. So let's call this bullseye. Bullseye. Let's go into here. And this is the trick. So I'm going to hold shift. And we're going to drop it in as a floating visualization. Okay. There we go. We don't need this thing. And what we're also going to do is... Oh, hang on. Did I press something there? Nope. Is we're going to make this entire view so make that a bit bigger okay so one drawback of this is this is pretty much as big as you can get from what I can see maybe if we add here maybe if you added more I actually don't know let's add more save this let's go back into here let's go refresh uh, no, so it's it's pretty much the maximum. It's really just kind of distributing them evenly as you're going. So I really don't want that many. So let's get rid of some of these. Okay, save, refresh. Okay, so that's probably a good amount. Okay, let's get rid of the titles because they're going to overlap. Overlap, okay. And this one's going to be at the very back. So I'm going to go here and go floating order. Now let's make this a bit higher because I can't see Okay, we're going to go here, floating order, send to back. Cool. This one is going to be on top. Now you can see there's this white space in the back. So what we do is we go here, we go format, we go into the paint bucket, and here where it says worksheet, we're going to set it to none. 
So now I can see behind it. And this is this is where you can get that kind of reduced opacity. You can see right behind it, which is nice. Okay, and we just line this up to be in the center, right? Roughly, there you go, like that. This one, let's make that a bit bigger. So this one's not actually displaying value six. So let's just activate that, allow labels to overlap. There we go, That's it's usually a small thing. Okay, so you can see this one also has that white problem, paint bucket, none. Okay, so let's just go like this, make that fit. So you can size this a little bit bigger than what you'd expect. Maybe that's too big. Okay, I'm getting there. I'd say about there is good. Okay, let's send this one back a bit. Send backward. So that we can select this, and this one's a bit too big. It's going way outside the um, the visualization. There we go. So I'd say that's about center. I think it's like that, and it's a bit too transparent. So let's go back in here. I don't want it to be that transparent, and let's give it a different color. Let's say orange. Yeah. Give the border. Oh, that's about as dark as it gets. Maybe we give it just a little bit of thickness, just a little. There you go. Okay, so that is basically how you would do your radar plot. Ah, I think that's the last video for me tonight. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of stuff. Don't forget to um, hit that like button. Please subscribe so you can get um, access and you can see all the videos I release every week, three times a week. And until next time, hope you guys have a good night and bye.